I'm born again this uh, evening. I'm glad that uh, the Lord has given me life. And I want to believe that we are glad that we found ourselves in the house of the Lord. Um, if there is something that we need to, thank, to be thankful about or to um, be grateful to the Lord about is that we can come and just be in the presence of the Lord. I'm told there are places that this cannot happen. And so we do not want to say that we are getting there, but we want to take advantage, full advantage, while uh, we have this space. Uh, you know there is a, a, a king who came in Egypt or who ruled in Egypt that didn't regard Joseph. Joseph was um, a prime minister, but there came, there, there, there came a king who didn't know who Joseph was. He didn't care. So we are praying and trusting that we will never get there as a country. So we need to appreciate what God has done for us, isn't it? Glad. We have been looking at uh, a series of being grateful, a heart of gratitude, being thankful. Uh, and, and this evening we're looking at developing a thankful heart. And in developing a thankful heart, we'll look at how we can do that or what scripture says we need to do. Or we'll look at situations that people are thankful or people are not thankful or what scripture says that we ought to do in developing a thankful heart. I'm sure we have so much that we can thank God for. If we started to enumerate the things that would make you have a thankful heart or a thankful attitude or a heart of thanksgiving towards God, there are a lot of things. If we started to enumerate them, we'll not have time. But I also know that there are times that we sit and ask God, where are you? Because you look at your life, you look around your life, and you do not seem to see anything that you can thank God for. Now, those are human beings, and we are part of that uh, uh, human beings who at times don't see why we need to be thankful. But I'm here tonight to just tell us that there is a lot that we, we can be thankful about. And in being thankful, we keep developing a heart uh, that is thankful, or a thankful heart. So today, we will look at a text in the scriptures that we might want to elicit lessons on being thankful. And our text this evening is coming from the book of Luke, chapter number 15. And uh, I know we know this, uh, this story or this account, Luke chapter number 15, and we'll be reading from verse number 11 through to 32. Uh, this is the parable, if you want, of the prodigal son, or the, the parable of the lost son. It is also called the parable of the two brothers. And it is a, a wonderful story that we, we get from scriptures. Allow me to read from verse number 11. This is what it says, Luke 15 and verse number 11. We're reading from the New Living Translation, hopefully. This is what it says. To illustrate the point further, Jesus told them this story. Now, this is a story that Jesus is telling them. Now, whether it was a record of things that had happened, or it was a story that Jesus brought because he is a man who knew how to teach, and among other things that he used as he taught were stories. And stories, some of them could be true, some of them could be imagined. Now, this is a story that Jesus is telling. And he says, a man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. A few days later, this younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land and there, he wasted all his money in wild living. It says in verse 14, about the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land, and he began to starve. 
he persuaded a local farmer to hire him and the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. The young man became hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him, but no one gave him anything. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, at home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. I'll go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I'm no longer worthy to be, uh, of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. Verse number 20 says, So he returned home to his father, and while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I'm no longer worthy to be, um, of being called your son. But his father said to the servants, Quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet. And kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast. For this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. Meanwhile, the older son was in the fields working. When he returned home, he had music and dancing in the house. And he asked one of the servants what was going on. Your brother is back, he was told, and your father has killed the fattened calf. We are celebrating because of his safe return. The older brother was angry and wouldn't go in. His father came out and begged him. But he replied, All these years I've slaved for you and never once refused to do a single thing you told me to. And in all that time, you never gave me even one young goat for a feast with my friends. Verse 30. Yet when this son of yours comes back after squandering your money on prostitutes, you celebrate by killing the fattened calf. His father said to him, Look, dear son, you have always stayed by me, and everything I have is yours. We had to celebrate this happy day, for your brother was dead and has come back to life. He was lost, but now he is found. Amen. We're looking at developing a thankful heart. Now this story is about two sons and their father. Shall we say a family that had two sons? Because we are not told about the mother and the other people who were in the, in, in, in the, in the family. The workers, maybe they were sisters. And, but we are told there were two sons who are in this story. Now one of them decides to get his share of the inheritance because his father was going to die. Or he says, give me what is mine before you die. He actually knew the father was going to die. Of course, we're going to die at some point. And after he got what was his share, he goes to a far off place where he thought he would enjoy life and where he didn't have what he wanted out there in the family or within the environment of his home. So he goes out there. He goes to a far off city or a far off land. And scripture says that he wasted his life. And then we have another son, the elder son. The elder son was very good. He stuck with the father. He stayed, scripture says, he stayed by his side. He was there all along. Even when his younger brother was asking for his share, he was there. Maybe he heard. And maybe he thought, after he has received his share, I'll also get mine. But he remains with the father. And the younger brother goes, or his brother goes, the younger brother, of course, he goes and wastes his life. And after some time, 
after going through hardships, he comes back and he comes back a beaten young man, frustrated, disappointed about life out there. What he thought would happen didn't happen. What he thought he was going to enjoy, he didn't enjoy. Scripture says that at some point, he was so broke, he didn't have nothing to eat. Because even the food that he was hired, uh, the food that he was giving to the pigs, he, was, he went and he got a job. At least he had some qualifications. He got a job to look after the pig. But even the food that the pig were eating, he longed for it. But he couldn't get it. And the long and uh, short of this story is that he, 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 he comes back when he realizes that this is not what I was cut out for. And he comes back to, to his he comes back to his family and to his father and he's celebrated and finally he's back home. A few things that we can pick from this story on being thankful. When, when you look at this story, you see a young man who didn't think that home was good enough. So there was another place that he wanted to go and enjoy life. But he goes and he realizes that home, home was better than this. But all along, we are not told in this story that there was a day that he enjoyed to be at home. He was not, he knew, he never, it's not recorded. And so, would imagine, he just took things, you know, just like that, kawaida. They were familiar. They had, you know, this farm. And, and, and I don't know whether you're, when you figure it out, when you think about this man, do you think he was a poor man or a rich man? The father. He looks like he was a rich man, isn't it? Yeah, he had servants. He would afford to slaughter a cow or a fattened calf. Slaughtering a calf? A fattened calf? He was doing better than uh, the ordinary Kenyan. If you went to some of our homes, that, that fattened calf is the only calf that is there. <laughs> or that cow is the only cow that is there. Oh, kwenu siyo kama kwetu. Labda kuna wale ambao. Yeah. But, but there are places where that cow is the only cow. And even the neighbor doesn't have. They actually come for milk in your place. So you're doing well. But this guy could afford to slaughter that cow for the son. And even after sharing with the son, giving the son what the son thought was his, he still has enough so that when the son is coming back, he's celebrating. He's, you know, throwing a party for this, for this son. Something also tells me that he was doing well because there was another son whose share wasn't touched. All this time, this son was at home taking care of what was his father's. But I also see a son who was not grateful for what they had in the family because when this younger son comes back, he's like, Mimi hata sina kitu. <laughs> this is the son of a rich man. And he's saying he has nothing. All this time, the father recounts and tells him, all this time, everything that was here was yours. So, it's not that there was nothing for him. The truth is that he couldn't see. Do we get to places where we cannot see what God has done. All this time God has been on our side. He has done great things, but you're looking around and you cannot see. You cannot see. We actually complain and say, oh no, this hasn't happened, this hasn't happened. And, and we need to get to a place like this elder son and start seeing. And the minute we start seeing, then we'll be thankful. I want to bring us just four points and then we will be done with developing a thankful heart. Thankful people focus on what they have, not what they don't have. If you want to be thankful, you will look at what you have. 
you will not focus on what you don't have. Believe you me, if you focused on what you don't have, there is a lot that you don't have. <laughs> a lot that you don't have. The other day, Bishop was talking about, you know, um, a private jet. I have been in this church for quite some time now. I don't know any of our members who has a private jet. If you wanted to focus on what you don't have, that's a place to focus. And you can focus on what you don't have for long. And what will become of you is a disappointed, disgruntled kind of a Christian. But when you focus on what you have, you start seeing a lot that God has done for you. When this young man who went away changed his focus from what he didn't have, which was not at home, and so he wanted to go out there and get it, when he changed his focus to what he had at home, he decided to come back home. And he comes back. Actually, the point where he says, I will go back, and I know we have used this text when we're preaching about repentance and salvation, which is good and it's true. But the truth is, is, is also found in the fact that he changed his focus from what he didn't have. At home, there was not that kind of wildlife that he, scriptures say that he went to live. At home, there were very, very strict parents who didn't want that kind of thing to happen in their family. But he looked out what he didn't have and he went there. But when he came back to his senses, when he repented, he started focusing on what he had. He actually focused on the servants at home. He focused on what his father had. He focused on the many things that were at home. And because of that, he came back home. Now, a thankful heart is a repentant heart. As long as we are not repentant, as long as we are out there looking for what we do not have, we remain a people who are not repentant. But the moment we repent, we start focusing on what God has done for us. It is so hard for people who are not born again to see that which you talk about. You tell them you have the peace of God. They are looking at what peace are you talking about. They will never see it because their hearts are not repentant. They will never see that which you talk about. There is a peace that people cannot understand. And they're wondering, you, are, you have a peace. What peace are you talking about? And they have locked your house. What peace are you talking about? And you don't have school fees. It's because the heart is not repentant. So, it is okay, it is true to say that a thankful heart is a heart of repentance. A repentant heart. A, a heart that will keep going back to God and saying... Yes, I have sinned. I am not worthy, but I'm coming back to you. Verse number 17 and verse uh, through to 19 of that portion of scripture that we have read. We have read. If you give us that, uh, it says, verse 17. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, at home. Say, focus now is home. It was out there, but now home. Even the hired servants. Realize that this happens when he came back to his senses. He said, at home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare. And here I am dying of hunger. Verse 18 says, I will go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you. And I'm no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. The servant who was at home, when he focused what was happening at home, even the servant was better than that wasted life out there. And so, thankful people will always focus on what they have, not what they don't. The truth is, if you choose to focus on what you don't have, there are a lot of things that you don't have. So he becomes appreciative, he becomes thankful, and because of that, he goes back home. His focus all this time was out there, what he didn't have. When he focused on what was at home, he came back. The elder son, all this time was at home. 
but he didn't have a thankful heart. And so he couldn't even see what was at home all this time. If you, have, if you don't have a thankful heart or if you have a heart that is not thankful, a heart that is not of gratitude, even what you have, you will not see it. Other people will be telling you, because you have a heart that is ungrateful, you'll be saying, who, me? <laughs> and you're wondering, are they talking about me? Because you're so ungrateful. You're so, your heart is not thankful. You, you, you're not appreciative of what God has done so that even what you have, you don't see it. And that's the elder brother syndrome. All this time, the father says, all these things were here. But he didn't see that. He's actually thinking his father has come back home for the very first time. But they have been together all along. A thankful heart is, 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 is developed as you continue to relate with the Lord. Having a thankful heart is not a gift. It is something that we work on. None of us has a gift of a thankful heart. If anything, we have that kind of a heart of the elder brother that doesn't see what God has done. The natural man who has not come into contact with the Lord, their heart is not thankful. But when we come to the Lord and we are changed, we develop that heart of being thankful. It becomes part of what you and I need to be doing. And a quote that I picked somewhere says, you are rich not because of what you have or not because you have everything but because you realize you have all that you need for life. Let me take that again. You are rich not because you have everything because the truth is you don't have everything. <laughs> and if you doubt, private jet. But because you you are rich because you realize that you have all that you need for life. The prodigal son or this lost son never thought he had what he needed for life. His thinking was that if he would get out there, there was everything that he needed for life. And that was wrong thinking. That was not true. The truth is that he needed all that he needed for life was provided at home. No wonder he comes back home, he's fulfilled, he's celebrated, because in that home, in this family, that is where everything that he needed for life was. So, a thankful heart is developed. We develop it. We are not gifted. When you would want to try this with kids, when they are small and they are growing, you give them something and then you ask the small kid to give it back to you. You realize that you don't know. They might even say thank you. Some of them, not all of them. But when you need to give it, when you need them to give it back to you, they will not. And even if you say, give it back to me, I'll give you two of that. <laughs> they are not sure you're going to do that. Why? It's because it's not a gift. It's something that you need to develop. And so, as we teach our kids, and as we develop a, 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 heart of, a, a, thanks, a thankful heart, what we do is that we go home as parents, we give, and we, we, we let them know that we also have a lot more remaining, and we can give some more. And so, in giving, they get to learn, it is good to keep giving. It is good to keep giving as opposed to holding or and, and, and that mindset of not giving is the mindset of the world that mindset of not giving says if you give you're going to become poor the mindset of Christians and scripture says if you give you will receive and we need to develop it in our children and as we develop in our children, we need to develop it for ourselves. 
we have opportunities, a thousand and one opportunities for us to give. And as we give, we develop a heart that is thankful. Allow me also to say that a thankful heart is developed when you cease from self and you start thinking family, we, ours. When you start thinking other people, when you start thinking our family, our church, our country, when you bring in other people, a heart or a thankful heart is developed. The person who, th who thinks me and myself, they will never ever develop a thankful heart. Because everything needs to belong to them. If it is not with them, it is not with anybody else. If it is not with them, it belongs to nobody else. But when we say it is ours, so we're looking for our, our prosperity, our peace, our, our development, our growth, then we develop a thankful heart. We're coming from uh, communities where, I, I don't know whether it's the African setup or it is the Kenyan mindset, where we're coming from a place of lack. Yani hakukuwa na vitu. Hakukuwa, siyo vitu, hakukuwa na anything. And I say this because even in our sayings, and, and <laughs> wonder, I don't know whether you have those sayings in your communities. Like we say in our community, we say, wako heo is not going eh? Have you heard that? So, wako himo is going eh? That is a setup of that's a mindset of a, of a community. Wako heoti ko igeta wako imo. So do im wale wana hawapeani ndio wengi kwa hiyo community. And you know we have grown that way. So that when somebody gives you something, it's like where wako heoti ko igeta wako imo. Ah, you need to appreciate. You need to say thank you. That is a mindset that is not right. And we we have been culturalized that way. And I know you're laughing at our community, even in your community, it is there. And that is not right. The scriptural thinking is give. Give and it shall come back. Give and it shall come back to you. Plant. You know, let that seed go to the ground and it shall bring forth a lot. But when you remain with it, when you don't give, then you become poor. That mindset of, of, of not giving, of, of lack, being informed by where we're coming from. I used to see it long time in our home. And we would get, I don't know whether you guys would eat ugali and maziwamala or some, sometimes we would, would use that as our supper. But there was always a lot of ugali. In some places, they even had cows. Like I know, I know, I know. But milk was to be sold. So we would get just a little milk. And, and even when you're eating, they are, they are watching you. <laughs> and then I would say, 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 it's a mindset. But you know, we need to get out of it. We need to get out of it. Developing a thankful heart will require you to look beyond and past material things. Many of us, the problem we have is that we are looking for material things. We are not thankful because we don't have the things that people see. I want to submit to us here, there are people who have everything that you see, 
but they are not at peace. Now, if you have the peace of God and you have peace in your heart, you need to be thankful. Oh, please. You don't believe that. You need to be thankful for peace. Kuna watu hawana amani. Amani ni peace. Yes. There are people who have no peace. They have everything that you would want to talk about. But they have no peace. They don't even see eye to eye. But they have money. You look at them, they drive big cars. I'm not saying driving a big car is bad. We shall be driving them. Not long from now. But being thankful, we need to go beyond the things that we see. With a, beyond the material things. Go beyond. See the peace that God has given you. See the joy that you have. There are people who are sick. Their money cannot heal them. But you, you, una bounce kila mahali, unaenda korogosho, unaenda kila mahali, and you're not sick, you're healthy. But you're saying, Mimi, mini hustler, mini sufferer. The truth is, if you wanted to see people who are sick and in hospital, they are there. They have the money. They have everything. You are a blessed person that you can walk about, you can do what you want to do. You can... Because there is something that we can thank God for. Good health. Good health. Look at what God has done. Some of us, the families that we have, we might not have a lot of things. Catherine, but you have your son and you don't fight. You eat your ugali and sukumawiki and you enjoy family. There are people who have everything. But they fight. Their kids don't listen to them. Say, woman, what are you talking about? They're calling their mother woman. That's their dad. The parents are not respected by the kids. The kids are wayward. But you, you, are, you have a nice family. You sit together. But you're not thankful. Can you imagine? Because you don't have this. You are in a rented house. You keep on ranting and, and complaining. Okay. You have a family. You have brothers and sisters who sit and talk to each other, not at each other. Hello. Developing a heart that is thankful, you need to look beyond material things. The most blessed people in the world are the ones who have a relationship with Jesus. If you give us 1 Timothy chapter number 6, 6 to 11, and I know my time is up, I'm just about to wind up. One more point and we'll be done. 1 Timothy chapter number 6, this is what he says, yet true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. After all, we brought nothing with us when we came into the world, and we can't take anything with us when we leave. So if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content. But people who long to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. Verse number 11 says, but you, Timothy, you're a man of God. So run from all these evil things. Pursue righteousness and a godly life along with faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness. That is what scripture says. Be content. There are things that you can pursue. Righteousness. Give us verse number 11, please. A godly life, a life of faith, a life of love and perseverance, gentleness, that is greater than the wealth that we could think about. So when you have a family and you have children and parents and brothers and everybody in the family can enjoy fellowship with one another, you need to be thankful to God. There are people who are born by the same mother, but they keep fighting. And they are fighting over pieces of land. They are they're fighting over animals. But you, and you can attest to this in your family, you see your brother, you celebrate them, you see your sister, you rejoice, but you are happy. <laughs> that is great wealth. Finally, let me say this. A thankful heart 
will be developed when we cease to compare ourselves with others. When you cease to compare yourself with other people, I can assure you, you are constantly developing a thankful heart. You know, we compare ourselves and we think others are better than us. The truth is that every time you compare yourself with somebody, <laughs> you will always have people who are better than you. And I can guarantee you this. Compare yourself with whoever. They will either be better than you or worse off than you. Again, it depends on what parameters you're using. There will always be somebody above you and somebody below you. And that's the way God has made it. So, quit this thing of comparing yourself with others. You compare your children with others. You think their children are better than yours. <laughs> Wait until you get to know what kind of children they are. So, wale wako ambao unasema wako hivyo, love them. Appreciate God for them. I remember Bishop saying the other day, you know, when kids were growing up and you're thinking, mimi ningezaliwa kwa hiyo familia ambayo, kuna nukanga mandazi na vitu kama hizo za kukangwa na nini, kwetu ni za kubal, kubal, kubal. Ata wakati kuna nyama ni ya kubal. And you thought, that family is a nice family. Quit comparing yourself with other people. Quit looking at how you know, you're comparing yourself and you say, if God had just given me a little height, or maybe made me a little shorter, kwa sababu hata watu warefu wakona shida zao. Ah, you get very frustrated when you're looking for a shirt. Hapa ina kutosha, lakini mikono ni fupi. You have an opportunity at that time to ask God, what, what, what didn't, ninini hapa ilikosakana kuingiana? Ama wewe ni mfupi, shati na kutoshea lakini mikono ni lazima yupeleka ikakatu. <laughs> and you know, God has created us that way and we are wonderfully and fearfully created. So, we need to stop comparing ourselves. Psalm 139 and verse number 14 <laughs> uh, says, Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. That is scripture. That you, you, you know, the work that God has done on you is, is a complex work. What do you want to say? But if you have a lot of now, you will have a lot of problems. You want to say, I'm very happy. How? You know, I'm very happy. That is their problem. Appreciate what God has done. Be grateful. Stop comparing yourself with others. Stop saying you'd, you'd rather have been lighter than yeah, you are dark. Or you... you, you God did a lot of color on you. You would rather be darker. Or you should have been born in this tribe. This tribe where you could have a and come and you could have a person. This tribe is among the 43 tribes. It's among the 43 tribes. And you know, that affects you. And you're saying, I would rather have been born from the right tribe. The truth is, you compare yourself, you will not be grateful to the Lord. In conclusion, we are saying you need to develop a thankful heart. And in developing a thankful, a thankful heart, stop looking at what you don't have and focus on what you have. Be thankful because this is a trait that you need to cultivate. It is something that you continue working on. We, we, need, we, we need to stop being familiar with God, with the things that God has done. Let's keep cultivating that trait of being thankful. See beyond the things, the tangible things, the perishable things. And scripture says that we have been redeemed with, with not perishable things like gold and silver. Can you imagine gold and silver being called perishable? But with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And so we cannot, we cannot keep looking at those perishable things, however good they might look. You are original. There is no other like you. There will be no other like you. Hakuta kuwa na wangeshi mwingine. Wangeshi ni moja in the whole wide world of over 7 billion people. Can you imagine? There is nobody who looks like you. You are on, an original. Nasi yo wangeshi to every one of us is original. There is no one else in the whole entire world who looks like you. So please, brothers and sisters, we can develop a heart of thanksgiving, a thankful heart when we stop focusing on what we don't have 
and focus on what God has given us, what God has done for us, who we are in God. Stop comparing yourself with other people. And suddenly, you realize that there is a joy that comes in your heart. Look at what is working as opposed to what is not working. And that way, I can assure you, we will be a grateful people, a people full of gratitude, and will have thankful hearts. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you and honor you that we could come into this place, our Father, and just talk about who you are and what you have done for us and what you have accomplished in our lives. And so there is need for us to be thankful. Many times the natural man would want to look at what we don't have. We would want to look at out there things are better. That family is doing better than ours. Those children are better than mine. We compare ourselves with other people and we end up being frustrated. We pray that in the name of Jesus that you would help us to just look around and like the, the, the prodigal son went out there and didn't get what he thought was going to satisfy him and he was able to refocus and look at what was back at home and he came back to his father. We pray that in the name of Jesus that we'll keep on refocusing on what you have done for us and, and that will keep on pushing us back to God because that is the best place for us. Cause our hearts to be grateful because I had to be thankful because then we will be reapers of joy and gladness in the house of the Lord. We want to thank you and to honor you because we pray this trusting and believing in Jesus name. Amen. The Lord bless you.